I want to point out that these things that John is seeing are churches, right? They're churches. He doesn't say they're church ages. He doesn't say these are periods of time that the world is going to go through in the future. He says these are churches. Because that's what they are. Because when he's writing these things down, he's literally writing them down and sending off a letter to be delivered to the church that exists at Ephesus. And then there's a church that's in Smyrna, and they're going to get a letter. And there's a church in Philadelphia, and they get a letter. And all of the churches that are listed here in chapters 2 and 3 receive a letter. This isn't like Back to the Future and Marty's writing a letter to uh, Dr. Brown in the, in the future that he's going to get from the 1800s or something, right? This is, that's not what this is talking about. Okay, John's not writing these letters off to, to the church age in Laodicea, and now someone finds, hey, we just got this letter today. That's not what's going on here. I know I'm kind of making light of this, but the, the doctrine I'm talking about is this dispensationalist doctrine that tries to teach that these are um, church ages, and they spend so much time focused on that, they, they miss, I think, all of the importance of these letters. Just focused on that as being some age. It's like, no, no, no. There's actually a lot to learn here when you actually apply it to church. When you apply it to a specific real church. How about starting applying it to your church and looking at what God is saying here as good things and bad things within church. Let's focus on that instead of worry about being, you know, describing some age or something. Because then what happens if you're looking at it as ages, what are you going to care about? You're going to care about the age you're in, right? And you're going to forget about all the other ages in the past. Because, oh, if, well, if these are describing ages, well, what age are we in? Oh, it's a lukewarm age. It's an age where people don't really care about much. Oh, yeah, see that going on. And then what? You miss, you miss so much. Um, and anyways, I'm not just saying that, that the, the, the doctrine is wrong because I don't like the, the end result of it. It's the doctrine is just wrong because it's wrong. <laughs> it's just incorrect. It's not, it's not what's going on here because we get the definition and the explanation of what he's seeing here. He's seeing seven churches and he sees uh, the seven stars. It says are the angels of the seven churches. Now that word angels there, again, this, you, can, you can get this context from scripture, but in general, the word angel itself means messenger. That's what the word literally means. And you're going to see, as if you do a word study on angels throughout scripture, that that word can be applied to human beings as well as supernatural beings. Right, the word angels. We we commonly think of angels as being, you know, like these creatures with wings and and things like that. That the people, you know, maybe creatures that the Bible refers to more as like seraphim or teraphim and things like that, cherubs. That's what people commonly will think of as angels. But angels can be applied. You know, the, Jesus Christ is referred to as an angel. And what the angels of the seven churches are here are the pastors or the elders. And it makes sense. If, if you're getting a letter, if you're going to send a letter to someone who has anything to do with the operation and what's going on in church, who are you going to send that letter to? Who's the one responsible for the administration and for how the church is being run within a church? It's going to be the elder. It's going to be the pastor. It's going to be the bishop of that church who's going to receive this information and say, okay, we're doing this good. We're not doing, we need to make some changes here because he's got the authority to make those changes and that makes the most sense. It's going to be sent to those angels. I mean, it, it wouldn't make sense if this was talking about supernatural beings, even, let's say, behind the scenes. Like, we've got these supernatural beings, angels being sent. Well, you're not going to send them a piece of paper. Where, you know, they're going to have to get the message some other way. I don't know exactly how they get their messages, but, you know, you're not going to, how, how are you going to deliver it to a supernatural being? Like, where's their mailbox, right? How are they going to receive that? This is something that's, that's literally happening. So we don't need to get hung up on, well, it says the angels of the seven churches. Yeah, because they're the messengers. They're the, ones, they're the ones who are in that position of authority within the church to make sure things are going well. So uh, again, not, not anything to be too confused over. It just makes a lot of common sense that that's what it's talking about here.